Good morning, friends. It is really good to be back. We had a wonderful weekend. Uh, my husband and I were helping with a youth retreat with our church, and it went really, really well. And we are, I think, we are finally caught up on our sleep. And so I thought this morning I would share with you uh, a little... I guess you can call it a haul, but it's not something that I went out and obtained on my own. This is a, a gift of two boxes of sewing items that I was able to be blessed with last week by my husband's cousin's wife. <laughs> um, her mother recently passed away, and so they were going through her home, and they knew that I made junk journals, or at least they knew that I loved vintage sewing patterns and material and so she set aside two boxes full of things and just brought them to me last week and I'm very 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 grateful for that and I have not even had the time to go through it so I'm doing that with you today if you enjoy this type of thing then settle in and get a drink and um, watch me go through these boxes of vintage sewing items if you don't that's fine you can click and find another video to watch a tutorial of mine or something but uh, this will just be a little um, box rummaging of these two boxes that I have in front of me here and uh, excuse both my peeling nail polish and my sore finger I cut my finger pretty badly last night while chopping green peppers it doesn't need stitches but it hurts nonetheless and <laughs> I have it bandaged up and I'm also trying to figure out how in the world am I going to junk journal with one of my most needed fingers not available to me. But nevertheless, we will carry on. Okay, so I'm just going to start pulling out items from these boxes and we'll just look at each as we go. I'm assuming a lot of these things were made for her when she was younger or maybe a sibling. So this one looks like early 80s, maybe. Um, 79 little nightgown pattern and then we have this this also looks 80s no date on this one so this is just a little women's um, jacket and skirt set we have a little sunsuit here a little crop top with shorts and this is 1979 also Oh goodness, this is a very old one. Um, this looks like the 1950s. This is a McCall's girl's dress pattern, 1956. What a treasure. That's really cool. Here is 4774 McCall's. And this is 1975. I love the red and blue. That's probably my favorite color combination on patterns for covers. <laughs> oh, these are precious. I wore dresses like this. My mom made that type of, like, the dress with the pinafore. I have many of those growing up. 1973. Adorable. Okay, I've never seen this brand. Let me know if you have. Patterns Pacifica. It looks like it's not used. The Wow, the font is so fun. Not even cut out. This is more, this is not really typical pattern paper. This is more recycled newsprint feeling. I love that though. I love it so much. And the instructions look pretty awesome. A lot of handwritten things in here that have been copied. So neat. Yeah, that is a first for me to see this brand. I've never seen that. Here's some more of that beautiful red and blue. These are girls and guys matching. 1978. The way they drew the faces kind of reminds me of Cabbage Patch Kids. The shape of the eyes. I love it. And then we have... This one, that is so cute. 1974. 
Oh, that's like a little first day of school dress. <laughs> oh, or maybe even a, you can probably use that as like a little paint smock. 1977. I went to a private school. Uh, oh, I went to a um, Baptist preschool. And then after that, I went to a very small Christian private school. And I did not like it there. But one of the requirements was uh, we had to wear dresses. And I had a lot of these little Mary Jane shoes. Here is um, 1975, more red and blue. This looks like a boy's pattern. The little stretch knits. <laughs> 1977. I love it when the patterns have writing on the front. I know some people think that that detracts from it. I think it's, I love it. 1974. I love it. All of the different calicos patterns. Here is a women's. That is super 70s. I love it. Most of these honestly don't have the age spots. A few of them do, but it looks like maybe they might have been stored in two different places. 1976. I think this typically happens with heat. I could be wrong. Here's blue and white. I love it. I would totally dress like this if I lived back then, 1974. I love the hairstyles too, this little flouncy look. <laughs> uh, 1977. Again, with all the little calicos. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you guys remember, and I don't even know what it's called, but I had a little fashion designer type thing. I know what you're probably thinking first, the fashion plates where you do the rubbings and then the patterns and stuff. This was not like that. It did not involve crayons. This was a, and I had one of those and I loved it. This was a, it was like the little shape of a woman's torso and legs, and then it came with little squares of material and a lot of them were these little tiny calicos and you would put them over the shape and then press down with this little thing that flipped down and it would show you what that would look like made into a shirt or a skirt or pants and I loved it. I loved it so much. This is some bell bottoms going on here. Looks slimmer pattern. 1973. I need my glasses. This is tiny. 73. A lot of plaid. I remember my mom having a lot of these plaid wool skirts. Um, 77. I love the colors on here too. Very fall-like. I can see a lot of fall-themed fashion journals in my future. 77. Oh my goodness, I love this one. <laughs> These little caftan dresses. I would seriously wear this, like, onto the beach. People would look at me like I'd lost my mind. 1969. Mm-hmm. Okay. This looks 80s. 82, John Weitz. <laughs> uh, this is just a little random instruction that got lost. We got some Princess Diana hair going on here. <laughs> 1982. I bet it was just so, I bet these outfits were just cool. Like, especially if you made them with the broadcloth, I bet they just let your skin breathe really well on hot days. Even more than a t-shirt. This looks like tops only. 1980. Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> Honestly, all th this is back in style, the high-waisted. Um, I seriously cannot believe it. I was looking at some of the things that the young people were wearing this weekend. It's funny, I feel old because I say young people. 
Um, cause I was, I felt like I was just one yesterday and I was like, oh my goodness, the high waisted jeans are back and they're not afraid to wear them. This is neat. 1983. I love the little pattern around the edge. Normally you don't see that. This is like a little tennis, tennis outfit here or golf. <laughs> and then this is 1977. I love how they try to do the blend, you know, the, they try to do the um, corresponding fabrics. It's just very appealing to the eye. This is, you know, the little girl's school dress, 1982. I bet that is made of corduroy. It looks like it is. Oh man, look at that hat. And the wide plastic bracelets, 1983. That has a name, it like, looks like it says Connie Sue. <laughs> Maybe she sewed for others as well, I don't know. This has Japanese on it too, interesting, 1983. Go everywhere. 1981. I love it. I love the patterns on here. I hope it's staying in focus for you. 1972. I remember the dresses that had the pattern, the pattern going a different direction right here on the front. Mm -hmm. 1984. The little tie neck blouses. 1981. I remember my mom really didn't like those. She didn't like anything that was tied around her neck. She hated turtlenecks. Still does, still hates them. I can imagine that would get stuffy after a while, especially if you were at work all day. A tight blouse neck. Yep, this is this is totally 80s right here. <laughs> 1983. See and so by Butterick. No price on this one, but we can tell when it's from, can't we? <laughs> Okay, now we're getting to some fabrics. This is like a little cotton pique, and it looks like it's a, like something already cut out to be sewn and it was never finished. Looks like a little, a little um, shift dress or something. I love the daisy pattern and the colors. Adorable. I love using fabric like this for spines because it's more durable and it's a lot less uh, easy to see through. Oh, I missed a pattern. Look at the stripes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think I'm going too far up on the screen. 1983. So it looks like this lady sewed very heavily between 1977 and 1983. <laughs> Okay, I feel like this fabric right here, I feel like maybe I've either had it before or I've had it as a phone background. I know that sounds silly, but you know when you go on Pinterest and you look for iPhone backgrounds, a lot of them are just screenshots of fabric pattern, and I feel like this has been my background before. Any, either way, I love it. I love the red, blue, yellow, and white and green together. I just think it's classic. This is interesting. It's like, okay, so it feels like dotted Swiss, which I was just saying that I wish I had some of. It's selling for crazy amounts online. I don't know if you've looked at it, especially, the, you know, the really old stuff from the 50s. Um, but this looks like dotted Swiss, and it has a shamrock pattern, but then it also has these. I don't know if those are supposed to be thistles. I don't know. One thing's for sure, it's very unique. That's what... My husband's cousin said 
these are very, you know, these are very unique patterns. And so they thought I would enjoy them. They were right. This is totally polyester. <laughs> I can imagine some pants being made out of this. Red gingham polyester. Another pattern. This has to be 90s. Look at those jams. And then a sarong shirt, skirt. I think that's what it's called. Yep, mock sarong skirt. Mock probably means it doesn't really completely come open on you. <laughs> it's probably got elastic waist with a little faux front. And then 1993 and 1994. Yep, those were my high school days. Okay. This bag has a lot of little tiny pieces in it, or, you know, like fat quarter size. We've got some little candy canes. I'm making I think I might zoom in a little bit for this part if that's okay. I feel like I'm too far away. I hope that's straight. Okay, little candy canes and peppermints here. And then we have a long strip and then we have the rest of that pattern right here. Cute. This does not look old at all. I wonder if she had started sewing some things for her grandchildren because this says 2006 on it. This is a beautiful Thanksgiving fall pattern here. This one too, it's got some turkeys. I wonder if these were gonna be napkins. So cute. I love the gold printing on them too. And then we have some Santa and snowman. And then we have, we have all of the seasons and holidays here. We have some bunnies and Easter eggs and jelly beans. Cute. We have some Halloween. I'm not a big Halloween person at all, but this might be something that I list in my shop because I can see somebody wanting this. This is really vivid and cool. Um, some plain green broadcloth and plain pink. Some more of the gourds and pumpkins here. Pine cone. Yep, pine cones. Green broadcloth, yellow bro broadcloth, and some more Easter eggs. That's cute. More Easter eggs. Little conversation hearts. That's so adorable. And this is so cute. Little chicks coming out of the egg. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay. And this, oh my goodness, this looks like something she started and did not finish. It's a little, <clears throat> but it looks like it might have been a bubble or just a little toddler dress. And then she's already got the applique done. I will have to figure out how to turn this into a journal cover. That is so adorable. So cute. Okay, it looks like the rest of this box is patterns. Um, nope, there's a few more fabrics down here. I'll just go in order. So I will go a little bit faster now through the patterns. We have that one. That one. That's cute. Oh my. Ballerina costumes. 1957. This will have to be a ballet themed journal. Wouldn't that be so adorable? Oh my goodness. Little coats. Little play clothes. That's so cute. Little Christmas down here. Look at that sailor suit. This is adorable. That would make a cute little like a slumber party themed um, journal. 
Look at these. I've made lots of sewing pattern journals and by far the ones that sold the most and the easiest and the quickest were the ones with the women on the front and the ones with the children don't sell as quickly and I'm curious as to why. Um, I think they're precious and I, I try not to make them childhood themed. I try to make all of them just generic sewing themed but um, I do tend to put a little more embellishments inside of children versus women in the, in the children ones but I just think they're so adorable. Even the older children, I just love them. They're just so vintage. That's cute. She's got another lollipop stowed away for later. That's so cute. My little sister wore these little things every day when she was a toddler. Look at that. It looks like strawberries. I could be wrong. That looks like strawberries. And I see a Raggedy Andy behind her. Another little nightgown bathrobe pattern. That's so cute. I got a big mess to clean up later. Here's some beachwear. Play clothes. Oops, I missed one. Look at that. The little snap, snap top to bottom pajama sets. <laughs> We have some more working woman fashions. I remember the ESP extra sure pattern. See and sew. Okay, this is interesting. We have some uh, matching robe sets and also karate. I have never seen that combo before. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, for whatever mood you're in. These, these long little robes, I love them. Again, as you can tell, what, this is the Western wear that was so popular in the early 80s, late 70s, 74. One of my first Barbies was Western Barbie. I loved her. This has been eaten on by something. But even if that happens and you can't use a majority of the pattern, cut these girls out and use them as embellishments. Perfect. This is the empty pattern envelope. I'm trying to figure out what this is. It looks like they're all holding onto white bars. That's interesting. And then here's, this is a flowy little skirt. I love that. I would have totally worn that in high school. And the little espadrilles. Jacket skirt. Some more leisure suits. Another one of those robes. That looks like for a holiday party. And 80s belted dresses. All right, now we're back to the fabric. We have some more of what we saw earlier, more Santas and a lot more candy canes. If any of these fabrics are just ringing a bell to you or reminds you of something that you had growing up or you would just love to have it because you can't find anything like that near you, let me know and I might consider doing some custom, you know, fat quarter cuts or something for those of you who are clamoring for a certain fabric that you see. Because I have more than enough to share of most of my fabrics. And my fabric bundles are still in my shop. Um, they're selling slowly, but they are selling. And I don't know if I'm going to do many of those. Like I said, it took a long time to cut them all out. Uh, but if you want to get one, grab it. And again, if you see something in here that just screams your name, then just please let me know and I'll make a custom listing for you. Okay, this looks old. It's got some aging on it and I probably need to launder this one really well. This is like a nursery type print, maybe nursery rhymes. That's like a faux quilted pattern. It's very unique. I've never seen anything like this. It's so adorable. Feels like 100% cotton, almost linen-like.
And then this one, this is interesting. This is backwards, let me see. It's a very 70s patchwork, but it says, I like you, America, and has an apple. That is unique. I wonder what the story is behind the design choice of this one. It looks kind of tea tree. <gasps> okay, I have this tiny little snippet of red ticking with pears and apples. I have some more of this daisy. And then, um, this is interesting. It's some of this like apron material. I, I bet that's what it is because it's very narrow. It's bound on both edges and it looks like you could just add a sash here and then hem the bottom and add some lace. That is so cute. I'll have to use this in my personal recipe, retro recipe journal that I'm making. Okay, I'm gonna try to go through the second box a little faster. It's It does not have as many items in it. First, we have this little piece, two little pieces like that, of this lovely mint green eyelet. It's like a wide trim. It is so pretty. I love the color. I see a lot of peach eyelet uh, and pink, but you don't see a whole lot of mint. And then this is a longer piece. It's extended up and it's got some little dots stitched into it further up. And then we have some polyester. This is the back. This is the front. Stretchy, tiny little white striped on blue. I don't know that I will use this. This is like a Pepto-Bismol pink polyester. And it's a lot of it. But it's quite vivid. <laughs> This is one of my favorite prints ever. I think it's made by Cranston and they made it in three color waves, I think. Red, yellow background, and a, like a royal blue background. And I love it. Um, I had a, or you know what? I think it also came in green because when I was younger, I think I had a, a green pinafore made of this. But um, it's just adorable. I see it on Etsy all the time. And I think I ordered some yellow off Etsy one time. Here's some more polyester, some hearts. I kind of want to see what she made out of this. Okay, this looks almost like curtain material. It's, it might be curtains. <laughs> um, it's got the, the finished trim at the bottom and it's eyelet. I guess you could call this eyelet but the thread is brown on beige. And then up here, oh, I don't know. You know what? I think this might be where the curtain rod went. I think it went through here. So this must be, yeah. And then it's got a hem at the bottom. So these are curtain panels. Interesting. Got two of those. Nope, three. Nope. Yep, three. Okay. This feels like chintz, which is, I remember it being one of my favorite fabrics when I was learning what fabric names were. And it was just everything in the 80s was upholstered in chintz. It's cotton, but it has this sheen to it. And you saw it a lot with floral patterns as well. So this beautiful mauve chintz. And then this looks like a curtain tie back because it has the little ring. And this looks like the curtains that go with it. It's another curtain panel or maybe the start of homemade curtains and she never finished them because they are not hemmed. Here's some more chintz. Okay, so I've been needing some strawberry fabric forever and look at this. Look how much. I wanted some vintage strawberry calico and I think I found it. <laughs> or I was blessed with it rather. Cranston again. 
They're just the masters at calico, aren't they? This is probably at least two yards, if not more. That is amazing. I could make a journal and a dress. <laughs> okay, this is cotton, but it looks woven. And so let's look at the back. Oh no, it's not, it's printed. I believe it's printed on, but it looks so woven. Um, it's interesting. It's kind of aztec -y looking. It's already been sewn together. John Wolf textiles. Never heard of that. Um, that would be an interesting journal for like a Southwestern or maybe even like a safari theme, maybe. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if you would consider this dotted Swiss. I don't think you would because these aren't flopped. They're more like painted dots, but it's kind of this, um, I don't know what you would call this, like a gauzy green fabric with little painted dots, but that is adorable. That would have been a cute little dress, but again, for journals, I love making sheer pockets out of fabric like that. Oh, here's some more strawberry stuff. What in the world? Oh. This looks like more curtains or I don't know. There is a ton of it and it is only this wide. Can you see? It's only this wide and it's got this weird puckering at the top and it's got a finished edge on it. If you know what this might be, I mean, it's almost like a table runner, but why would you have one this long? Why would there be this much? Look at that. It just keeps going. <laughs> and it's just one solid piece. I'm not gonna unroll the whole thing. It needs to be laundered. I wonder if I can get this aging stain out, but my goodness, if I, okay, I'm in no shortage of strawberry fabric for forever. <laughs> that is such a blessing, awesome. Okay, we have two patterns here. Aha, now we know what the curtains were going to be. They were going to be this draped, I don't know what you call those, ascots? No. Balance. <laughs> I remember when everyone had curtains like this. Oh my goodness. And they were so easy to do. As long as you could hem a straight piece of fabric and know the right way to drape it over a rod, it looked like he spent a million dollars on them. Okay, here is some lime green polyester. I mean, this is bright. I seriously want to know, did she make outfits out of these colors and wear them? If so, kudos to her. That is bold and I love it. Okay, this is like a, uh, what would you call this? Acetate? You can kind of tell, almost like a silky, almost sorry silk feeling. And it's just one small piece, but it looks Asian. I love it. And then another little gauzy piece. It looks like one of those scarves that everyone wore in the 90s with the little chains and rope design. Black and yellow. That's awesome. We have a small piece of pink polyester. And the last thing in the box is this. And this just looks like tropical, like mermaid, oops, mermaid or beachy themed journals. I love the colors. I love the way the fabric feels. It is so pretty. He was right. These are all very unique. I don't think I've ever, other than the Cranston small flower bud fabric. I have never seen any of these, even on Etsy, as far as I can remember. So I am so thankful. I will definitely be sending them a thank you card. I might even, I might even, even make them something else, if you know what I mean, using some of these fabrics as a thank you. I think that would be so special uh, as a way to remember her mom. So I need to be adding that to my radar of things to make, but definitely Please let me know your favorite, your favorite pattern 
and or your favorite material that I showed you today. I'm just blown away at the generosity and um, I'm also trying to figure out where I'm going to put all of this. <laughs> but I'm super blessed and thankful and I hope you guys have a great day. I'm back and I will be doing a Thrifty Thursday video this week. So check that out and we'll see you in a day or two. Bye-bye.